Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed your meal. Um, Mr. Werner Fischer from Thomas Crenn has now the, well, honor and <laughs> the Herausforderung. Um, ah, English. Danke. Challenge uh, to oh, new guests. Please come in. Have a seat. Um, yes, to wake you up after the meal again. And he will do it with his talk about Linux performance uh, profiling and monitoring. Have fun. Thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon and welcome at the OSTC. Uh, I am happy to have the opportunity to give two talks at this conference because my regular talk is, uh, is tomorrow and today I am pitching in for Shopee Mans, who had unfortunately had to cancel his talk today. So maybe some of you have read my, my tweet, which I replied to Michael Friedrich, who said he enjoyed the, uh, the lunch, and I answered I'm in the lounge, in the speaker's lounge. So I finalized the slides uh, right now, and I uh, all ask you to keep your fingers crossed that all the four demos will work, and at least that my DDDs won't overwrite my hard drive, so I can finish the talk here. So, the next, uh, yeah, about 45 to 50 minutes, I will uh, guide you through the topic Linux performance profiling and monitoring, a topic which is we are present for every Linux administrator nearly every day. And to give you a little bit of background why I'm talking about this topic, I'm working at Thomas Quinn for by now, we have 2017, 12 years roughly. And we are a server manufacturer from Bavaria, and I'm at the knowledge transfer department uh, where we do also much of our research and provide the information on the Thomas Quinn uh, wiki. Yeah. What's the agenda for this afternoon? I have yeah, three or let's say four main areas in my talk. Uh, first, uh, part will cover how to collect statistics with different tools, starting with the Sysstat package uh, using MPSTAT, VMSTAT, PITSTAT, and IOSTAT. Then going further on, uh, showing how DSTAT and NICSTAT are working, how it's possible to use uh, the system archiver to get uh, the numbers also available later on and showing some uh, Percona Cacti templates and some monitoring plugins for a singer or Nagios. The second part will cover tools which can be used online. So when you're focusing some performance issues and you want to figure out, okay, what can I do right now? Things like top, IO, top, and if top. Going further on, when it gets really deeper to optimize your system, how you can use tracing utilities uh, like the Perference, F-Trace, or the Perf tools. Uh, or using flame graphs to uh, yeah, visualize um, the functions that you are doing when running a specific task. And at the end, uh, some very up-to-date information about a uh, performance metric about the CPU utilization and yeah, some hints why it may be wrong to use this number without deeper thinking about this. Uh, Brandon Gregg has written a blog posting a few days ago, uh, which led to, yeah, um, I, I could say many discussions on the internet. He updated the article uh, also, and I can give a little bit of overview there, what's here all about. Okay, let's start. How can we collect some statistics for our system? Who of you has the, the sysstat package installed on, a, on the system? Okay, about 50%. So uh, the tools we are covering in this talk uh, will be tools from the sister package and some other tools. I've brought this uh, slide also from Brandon Gregg, um, who is a performance analyst at Netflix, optimizing the Linux systems every day yeah, to guarantee that your videos can be watched without any latency in your movies. And yeah, I'm hoping that you don't use his services right now um, in case you have a laptop open, but you can uh, use the, the, the tools during the talk. So when we take a, a look at the talk now, 
this is not the number of minutes I will overrun this talk, this is the number of tools that we will cover in this talk. And yeah, every time you see what we are currently now, you can take a deep breath and hope that they'll still be in time and uh, finish without any overtime here. So let's uh, dig into it. Uh, let's start with uh, MPSTAT. Uh, it's um, yeah one of the tools which are coming with assisted package. Um, we are seeing that it reports the CPU-related statistics using information from the PROC file system. So many of these tools that we are seeing here, especially from the assisted package, are indeed using information which is directly available in the PROC file system. So you could also go to the PROC file system, query that information there, uh, but these tools uh, try to, to give it to you in a good, readable manner, so you can interpret the numbers uh, um, yeah, a little bit more easily. When you don't provide any interval or count, you get the numbers since the last system startup, so you get average numbers since the last system startup. And you see uh, CPU usages per core, including uh, hyperthreading. So in this case, when you're having a system with two cores and hyperthreading activated, you're getting uh, data like um, here, where you see, okay, I'm having four CPUs, two choose CPUs, uh, but the number of four because we're having hyperthreading here. You can get this information from the LSCPU uh, command, and this is the reason why we are seeing uh, four uh, CPUs here. Let's take a look at the different uh, uh, columns. We have columns for user CPU time, for system CPU time, so depending whether uh, the core is executing uh, user core or, or kernel level core, uh, it comes to this or, or this column. And on the other side, we are seeing the idle time, so the time where the CPU is doing nothing, waiting for something to be executed. Uh, since some years, you also have a column for for a, a guest uh, a CPU usage. So when you're using, for example, KVM virtualization, you can get information about yeah, virtualized uh, a CPU code in here too. Okay. So let's get one step further. Um, when we're doing MP stat in this example or with a parameter two at the end to get, for example, here the output every two seconds, we see uh, the output, the output here. And in this case, um, we're seeing that the core one is not idle and it deals with IO weight. So we are seeing, okay, um, the CPU would like to run uh, a code here, but yeah, it has to wait for IO. In this example, uh, we are running a FIO test, so uh, an IO bound test, leading to um, yeah, to weights in the IO column here. Let's take uh, one step further to VMstat. Here we see some more um, high-level statistics about different uh, topics, about virtual memory, about swap and paging also about I.O. statistics, and also about system interrupts and context switches. And yeah, also again, information about the CPU. So we're having again the information about uh, user CPU time, system CPU time, idle time, and so on. Um, in case you're thinking about what might be ST, ST is the so-called steal time. This is stolen from a virtual machine. We have no virtualization here, so we don't uh, see yeah, any, any output in this example here. When it comes to memory statistics, um, who is use, using the, the free command? Okay, nearly everyone uh, expected that and hoped that. Uh, we are seeing also uh, output in here, uh, and you can compare VMs that and the output of the free command, and we see that the numbers here, okay, they are the same. So we are getting 
uh, uh, the same information that which we could also get from the free command. And it's very important when you look at the free command to interpret this data correctly, what is happening here is that we have indeed um, yeah, many data cached in memory. This is um, from the buffer cache. So when you're doing I.O., you're reading, for example, a file or you're writing a file. Um, what is happening in the background is uh, that the, the kernel reads the data from the device via the device driver and puts the data into the memory and provides uh, the block data to the process who requested the data. Uh, but also when the process has finished its work and doesn't want to have the data anymore, the data is still kept in the uh, page cache here. Uh, this has the advantage that when you need the data again, yeah, you can grab it from the memory and you don't have to go to the, uh, to the block device itself. So when you see, for example, um, with a free commando, what amount of memory you're really using for your applications, um, you have to take into account that you uh, yeah, add or, 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 or uh, subtract the numbers from the buffer cache. So you're seeing, okay, indeed I'm having nearly all of memory free. I'm using my memory indeed for the page cache. And this is really an, ex uh, an important topic because um, when you're having, for example, the experience that um, your RO system seems to be a little bit too slow um, and um, you I think, okay, I'm having enough memory. It might be a good idea to add some more memory, although your processes don't need it, but you can use it as page cache here. What are other process-related fields we see at the very beginning? The R column and the B column. The R column is the number of processes that could be running or which are waiting for one time. In this case, we have a number of zero here. So we are having enough CPU power at, at this, in this case. If you have a high number here in the first column of VMs, that it's an indicator for CPU saturation. So it might be a good idea, maybe depending on your workload, to add more, uh, additional cores or, or to, to see how you could optimize your code. In the second column, we have the number of processes in an uninterruptible sleep. Mostly this is time waiting for I.O. And we can see here, for example, that when we're looking at the kernel functions using the PS commando, we see, yeah, that um, they are always uh, X4 file write, which is expected to run here, but Jan simply needs some, some time. When you want to graph these numbers, there are uh, tools like Gnublot, for example. I've added a link here in the presentation. You can find it in the PDF that will be available on the conference website uh, to get to know how to use Gnublot, for example. But according to my time, I have to go on. As we are mostly not uh, yeah, satisfied with summaries and overviews, we want to uh, dive a little bit deeper. And for example, we want to know what is PIT number 9059 doing. For this, there's a tool called PITSTAT. It reports statistics for tasks being managed by the kernel. For example, uh, when you are looking at this example here with a top commando, you see, okay, my command, uh, which has been executed, is Python. We have here an information that uses 96.9% of my CPU. We do not know the arguments, for example. We can use pitstat to uh, get more information and see, okay, we are doing some matrix calculation here. There are also other reports for PITSTAT. For example, we have the possibility to use a device report with a minus D command. This unwheels uh, which command is, for example, executing or causing uh, this I.O. bit that we are using, uh, seeing here with the MPSTAT commander. So there are different reports. One of them is the device 
a report which can be used for this case. Other possibilities how to use pitch stat is how much memory is the pit using. And here are multiple numbers uh, interesting for us um, to indicate, for example, if we need more RAM and more memory or, or not. For example, in the column for the major faults, these numbers here are an indicator that um, we need to load memory pages from disk, means that data has been swapped out, indicating that it's yeah, a good idea to add more memory into the system. And yeah, in, the, in the last comment, we see the currently used share of physical memory by, uh, by this process. Next tool, I.O. stat. This is showing I.O. subsystem statistics. It has also multiple reports, for example, a CPU report or the device utilization report. Um, again, when you execute it without any arguments, it shows you the average number uh, since the last reboot. You can skip that with the Y option if you want to get the, uh, the data which is uh, currently uh, used. And for this, I will dive into demo number one. Okay, it works. I only have to switch a little bit because I haven't display, uh, mirrored my display here, but this seems fine. Okay. So, but just to show you what I'm doing here. So uh, this demo has four scripts which I'm using. The first script we see, okay, I simply execute I.O. stat and uh, execute it four times. Um, in the second uh, script, we see we are running a field test and we are executing it using task set. So we want the task to be run on core number one. In the third um, output, we are using the output of the mpstat commando. And in the fourth example, we are again doing another CPU bound uh, action on the same core. Okay, we're seeing we're mostly idling here. So I'm doing Okay, this changes, as you can see here. I'm running the field test here. Idling is going going down, and here we are having I await here in this in this case. So the test is still running. That's fine. Yeah, and here we see that uh, we're running, in this case, on the first uh, core, this is core number zero, and yeah, we are doing the work here in this, in this core. We won't have this output um, in, in this case when we are, uh, are using uh, the other output we see, we're seeing here, we're having the uh, average from all four CPUs, in this case we see the individual ones. So, and now in the fourth, Column, I'll demo one, I was that four. Just to start this again. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Okay, we're using some CPU bound uh, work here. Okay, I'll have to execute this again. Okay, and what we're seeing now is that um, the idle time here is going down to zero, and also the IO wait time is going down to zero, although we are doing the field test in the background, which is causing a lot of IO. 
So this is a thing which is really, really misleading, and you have to watch out that you don't yeah, uh, um, tap into it, because um, you're thinking, okay, I owe it is zero, everything is fine with my IO subsystem, but um, as we've seen before, when we don't have this um, CPU-bound task running at the same time, Okay, my field test finished. <laughs> Murphy's Law a little bit. Okay, fine. We're seeing that we're having the IO weight here again. So this is really an important uh, a thing, and uh, yeah, I think I overl I've overlooked also for, for many, many years. Um, so don't, don't miss this. Okay, I'm about slide I have to oh. ah. yeah so who first demo worked and didn't overwrite my laptop <laughs> <laughs> okay so I've also written this into the, the slides, so when you watch the slides without watching the video, I.O. weight is some kind of idle time, but you have to be really, really careful when you have a CPU-bound task running at the same time. Yeah, zero doesn't mean everything is fine. So let's uh, go on with I.O. stat. You are getting an extended device report when you're using the minus um, x parameter. You're getting a utilization in percent. And when you're using this, it's always a good idea to read the man page, like every administrator is doing before using a tool, reading the man page. Um, for devices serving requests serially, it's fine. But for parallel processing, like for RAID arrays and SSDs, this number doesn't reflect the performance limits. So, in the good old days when you have, you have used one hard drive and you wanted to analyze it, it's a good idea to use this. When you're using an SSD or weight device, it's, it might be not that good idea because these tools or, or these devices uh, uh, have the possibility to, uh, to serve requests in parallel. So, what does this number mean? For example, in theory, when we're using this SSD, we're having 94.4% utilization, about 23,000 IOPS. If we would calculate it, we would expect with 99.6 to get 24,000. But that's not the case. In fact, it nearly doubled in this case. So the reason behind that is um, when IOS that is calculating this number, it just takes into account, okay, um, what do I get back in this amount of time? Um, but as an SSD controller can do multiple IOs in parallel, um, serving a bigger request uh, a size, um, this number doesn't reflect this. So it's good for a hard drive to use this number, but for devices which are servicing requests in parallel, like for SSDs, this is not so a good performance indicator. So the question is what, what could be better, uh, uh, better indicators? Uh, for that, we will look at the Linux storage stack diagram. Uh, anybody of you knows this diagram? OK. Unfortunately, no one knows this diagram. Um, we are having this on the on the wiki. We are also having printed versions of of the diagram at our at our booth, and it simply shows yeah how I/O goes uh, uh, to the to the Linux kernel stack when you're writing, for example. Up there, there would be the file system. <laughs> then <laughs> it comes to yeah, optional uh, uh, stackable uh, um, uh, I/O modules, for example, like LVM modules or, or uh, software aid, DAPD, and the stuff like that. And then it comes down really to the block layer. Um, it could be that it goes through the normal old school I/O scheduler or the newer block MQ scheduler, uh, and then executes the um, the uh, request based uh, commands to the request based 
uh, drivers below. So, um, as we've seen, what is not a good way? We can think about what could be a good, a good a thing when you're using I/O stat. Uh, with these options, you get information about the average queue length of a request that's being issued and the average time requests being served. So, the thing is here when you can serve more requests in parallel while the waiting time is not increasing. This is a good performance indicator. So, for example, when you're using an SSD and you have the possibility to, for example, uh, issue eight I.O. commands in parallel on the SSD um, instead of issuing only one, and you have to wait nearly the same amount of time, it's, yeah, it's a good, good indicator. Um, but this is always also a thing where you have to balance, okay, do I want to get the highest possible number of IOPS? Or do we want not so many IOPS, but these IOPS should have a uh, very low latency? Because what happens in the SSD or in the kernel uh, might be that, for example, when you're issuing 16 IOs in parallel, the kernel waits a little bit of time to get the 16 IOs or 16 requests and then brings the data back. But for the single, for one single um, IO, the latency is longer. So although the number of apps increases, maybe your latency uh, increases too. So you have to watch out what you, you want at this time. So I've uh, showed a diagram. We are now at point four. We have about half of the talk time, but uh, I can say that the other tools won't take that much long time. So let's get on with the other tools. DSTAT, for example, DSTAT combines several classical uh, uh, tools. Um, it's a replacement, for example, for VMstat, IOstat, and ifstat. And for everybody who likes colors, it's a good idea to use that tool. It has a plug-in concept and um, yeah, um, can be used as a replacement for this kind of tools. Nixstat, as you could expect, Nixstat is a tool for uh, monitoring uh, network devices. Um, you have a utilization in here. This depends on the speed and the duplex uh, mode of, of your NIC. And the saturation, for example, also takes errors into, the count, into account. So when your network is saturated, uh, drops can also be an indicator and you could uh, use these tools to, to get, um, yeah, data for, for that. Okay, so short question to you. Who of you are having a history of performance data or collecting data of your? Okay, about 60, 70%. Which tools are you using for that? Is this that? Yeah, okay. They also, pardon? Nagios. Nagios, yeah, Nagios, there are many plugins for that. Well, I've seen it. Pardon? Moonin, Moonin yeah, Moonin is also a good, good thing where you can, there are also possibilities to use, for example, tools like Graphite or, or something like that. Uh, in case you are one of, of, of those uh, who don't collect data right now, there's also a, a simple tool uh, which can be, yeah, easily used in a, in a hacked kind of way. Um, it's part of Syststat. It's um, the System Activity Reporter. Again, a, a slide board from, from Brandon Gregg. Um, it has multiple tools. Uh, one of them collects the data and other tools are, are used to, to output or to query the data later on. And as it says, System Activity Reporter collects data from multiple points from the PROC file system. So you have the advantage that you can use tools to monitor the data later on. For example, you could use ca uh, CASA or things like that uh, to get the possibility to yeah, view historical data here of your SAR data. And that's very easy to use and doesn't need uh, yeah, deeper knowledge for, for that. Other possibilities are, for example, uh, templates like here from Percona for Cacti to have numbers like these ones here. And you also mentioned that there are uh, tool arounds, uh, tools around and plugins around 
for uh, monitoring tools like Nagios, Singer Moonin, and this stuff like that, um, where you could can uh, monitor this data. Um, there would also be still be work to be done, like for every plug-in area, there is always the possibility to enhance the possibilities of the plugins right now. We are having our yeah, main focus on developing harder plugins, so unfortunately, I haven't had the chance yet to uh, do something in, in this case. So that's it for the first area uh, for collecting statistics. We'll now uh, carry on watching data online with top, IOTOP, and IFTOP. Top also present on every, every system, um, shows uh, a system summary at the beginning, and then per process metrics afterwards. In the first uh, line, you see the one, five, and 15 minutes load averages, and then, yeah, the output, the currently updated output every second of processes that are running on your system. Uh, when you want to use uh, some uh, further functions of, of top, I can recommend the H button to get the help. You can see online, okay, which possibilities I can use uh, for for different um, things I want to to monitor. One thing that you have to remember is when you're using top, um, it's updated every second, and when you're having processes that only are around for, yeah, um, only a few microseconds, for example, you could run into the issue that you don't see the, the process here on top. So keep in mind the updated output is updated every second, but you can't miss um, single processes there. Yeah, what you're seeing here using uh, memory usage, for example, the total size of the virtual memory, uh, how many blocks are really, really allocated and mapped to address space, which are a resident, and how much of the virtual size is shareable. I've also added yeah some other links on here for details on on that. And yeah, what you have to keep also in mind is that it can consume resources on its own, so it's running, so it needs some CPU to be run. Um, as mentioned, you could use the H button to, to get information about further uh, possibilities, like uh, using the F button to toggle and select fields, for example, for swap. Um, when you execute it, the minus U option to see processes from a user. You can also use K, that's a very important one, to kill a pit when you're having some issue here. Just use, use that or to realize it, but it can miss uh, short living processes. Again, for those of you who like colors, there's another tool like HTOP, um, a little bit uh, sophisticated. Um, views can be customized. And yeah, at the end of my talk, I've also show another top-like tool. It's called TipTop, um, which I got some new a few days ago from Brandon Greg's posting, um, but I have it on the, on the end of the, of the slides. Good. Um, what can you do when you want to get information for I/O uh, things? There's I/O top to use, and top style tool for I/O. Um, you can see which processes are causing uh, I/O, uh, finding the specific uh, process ID, and then look. Okay, what's the command behind? Um, uh, for example, um, we're seeing here that yeah, Theo is. Um, is using that. What's nice about the tool is that it shows write suites uh, and, and the command in real time, so you can monitor your I/O with this. Yeah, when it comes to networks, um, bandwidth live usage, you could, you could use uh, IFTOP for uh, per interface usage or Netox to get the information per process to see okay uh, which of my processes is causing which amount of network I/O. So we stepped a little bit further, uh, about 60-70%, so time is getting better by now. And we can uh, uh, focus on the, on the tracing part. Uh, 
Uh, so wha what's tracing and profiling about? Um, what you can do with uh, the tracing and the profiling uh, uh, tools, you can count, for example, uh, specific samples or events. You can count objects and you can collect the statistics for that um, with um, what, what happens within the, the kernel code. The next slides focus on system profiling using F-Trace, Perf events and Perf. F-Trace is already around uh, in the Linux kernel for quite some years, so for about nine years it's, it's around. Um, it's good for to see what is going on inside a kernel, and yeah, a common task is to, to trace um, events, and you need debugfs um, mounted that it can be run. So at this point in time, I'll go to live demo number two. to check nothing is running anymore. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So for this one, um, I'm, I'm checking whether the debugger is is, uh, uh, is okay and then, then I'm Activate tracing, execute the date command, yeah, and switch tracing off again. And then the next step, we will take a look at the trace and see, okay, what is going on here. So, date command executes very fast. Um, it doesn't do many things. In this case, we are querying date and time. So, and I've executed less with the minus M option, with a, a capital M. Um, so, we can see the line numbers on here. In fact, we're having the beginning of the file. We're seeing, okay, the functions which have been called while I've executed the date command. And now I'd like to ask you, what do you think the command, well, simple command, how many functions are being executed in the background while I execute this command. Any ideas how many? Twenty? Two hundred? Thirty, okay. It would be it would be nice if it if it were two hundred or so then it would be a little bit easier to interpret this data. Let's go to the end of the file. It needs some time the less command oh okay we see uh, just a little bit more what's happening in the background here. So, um, yeah, it's a nice thing to, to use this functionality and to optimize really code when you're, yeah, in some company where the, the last microsecond is really important, but it's not that easy for uh, everyday sysadmin. So, for me, it's n it wouldn't be that that easy um, to, to, to use. So... This one worked out two again. So time is fine again. So um, as mentioned right now, okay, here example for that again and how to, to use the, the trace. Um, we will see then some graphical improvement for this, how to interpret this data with flame graphs later on. So we've seen, okay, there's a much of stuff going on in the background, but how can we read this? We will see with flame graphs later on. Okay. For the perf events and perf, it used to, to be called performance counters for Linux. There's been a lot of updates with uh, uh, kernel version 4.1, for example, so most of the um, uh, current uh, distributions have their updates here. Um, you have performance counters, trace points, probes, UPOs, and you get the package with the Linux uh, 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 tools, um, commons package. For the KPROPs, these are probe points in the, in the kernel code um, for, for static uh, tracing from, from Perf. 
um, and uprobs are probe points in user application co code. When you are doing a perf list, you will see about yeah, 20,000 supported events which we can use there. There are also, for example, um, events for CPU architectures and stuff like that. So when it comes down to raw CPU counters, um, you can, for example, uh, go and grab the documentation uh, which mm, code is necessary here. And yeah, we can, for example, collect last little cache misses um, with this raw mask. So depending on the things that you can, you want to uh, uh, um, to analyze, you have possibilities here. Trace uh, a points perf has also a trace functionality. So a lot of possibilities for tracing here for files, then block layer and and syscall, for example. Um, yeah, so you can go and watch, for example, okay, how many syscalls are executed here and, and use this um, this data. You can use uh, then uh, perf start to get the counter summary when you're executing uh, stuff like this, using how many context switches I'm doing, how many instructions, how many instructions per cycle. This is a number which we will also cover later on, again, when it comes to the details for the CPU. But I think you'll have to carry on a little bit. Um, yeah, you can also record samples to a file. This is an advantage that you can uh, analyze um, the, the stuff later, later on. Yeah, and report it then later on, as mentioned. Yeah. So you can see here, for example, for, for this example, um, where we've uh, written some, some data on, on the file system. As you can see, here is an encrypted SNU, so we're doing some encryption here, when we also write then the, the data uh, to the device. And it's in, in it seems that um, the encrypted S code at least, yeah, need some system CPU time, so I would expect that um, indeed for this uh, DD, for one megabyte from the F0 to the block device, um, the data is really also encrypted here. Yeah, for the perf tools, they're by Brandon Gregg. You can uh, get them from, from GitHub. Um, he mentions that most of them are quick hacks and one should read the warnings. Um, and here's some uh, some more examples what can be used from the perf tools and cache stat for example we will take a look at, at this in the third demo now Okay, what we're doing now is um, I'll execute the perf tools, the, the cache stat uh, uh, tool, then I'll do some I.O. Uh, I'm using an ISO image that I've needed to, to use some, some days ago when the, the Intel AMT security thing has been published. Uh, you needed uh, Windows for that to query the system. So without Windows, you weren't able to really get the knowledge, is your system affected or not? So that's the reason why I've had this ISO image on here on my Linux laptop. Um, Unfortunately, this does not cover uh, uh, the requirements for the speaker that every software must be GPL, but this is only the ISO image, I won't use it here. So, um, yeah, and then we see what can be done when we drop the caches. Okay. It needs some time to get, to get up, but I think you can uh, uh, see it well. Um, here in this case, we are using the perf tool for the for the cache output. And we see the cache hits, the cache cache misses. So these are the um, most important columns: hits in the first one, misses in the second one. Remember that. Okay.
So now the DD is running, I'm reading the file, uh, the ISO image uh, for Windows 10, so it's back one, um, reading it uh, from my device. Do you remember what's the first column? <laughs> Hits, yeah, and the second one? Misses, yeah, great. So uh, we've seen, okay, we have a lot of misses in here. What would you expect when I execute the command a second time to read the data? What should happen? Pardon? What should happen? No, no misses. No. Let's see if this is true. Do it a second time. Okay, we have lots of hits here. That's fine. And, oh, it takes not that long in this case. It's not that long. So we're saying, okay, in the first case, uh, my device, uh, my SSD in the laptop uh, had about 200. 80 megabytes per second in the second case, it's been 1.3 kilobytes per second. Wow, that's a good SSD. Or it's a fast memory. So we're seeing, okay, in this case, we see now we have all the ISO in the page cache. So it's good that I have a 12 gigabyte memory in my laptop to have uh, yeah, some gigabyte of ISO image for Windows in here. But um, as I don't want this data anymore in my memory. I can purge it. You can do this simply with the Echo 3 uh, to proxy VM drop caches and the Linux kernel is told to drop its page cache. So when we see now again, okay, um, the presentation running and, and stuff like that, but we have about five gigabyte less of data here. So when I Read it again. When I read the data again. Ah. The second one. It's fine. Yeah, we're seeing now after I've purchased data, it, it's again the thing that um, I have misses here. So this is one example of the perf tools. Um, as mentioned, these are small scripts by Brandon Gregg, and you can grab them via GitHub. So and I have to stop my, okay, it is, it is gone. Oh, okay. So that's been demo number three, 12 minutes left, so I have to carry on a little bit, but <laughs> It will work out for both of you, of, of you and me. So I've mentioned it's not that easy to, to read this 22,000 functions of a date call. Um, what's a good idea? A good idea is to uh, use a little bit more readable output. So fl uh, flame graphs are a good idea for that. Uh, flame graphs are visualization how resources are being distributed among code. And when I take a Simpler example, for example, my day, um, a normal work day, for example, I have an, okay, I'm processing emails for some time, then I'm getting an email, there's a bug in here, okay, then I, I'm doing the bug fix, and yeah, um, process this, um, then uh, I'll hurry on with some hacking and do some testing, and in the evening I want to have some dinner, so to have something to eat I have to, to cook. Uh, today I don't have to cook, I can go to the evening event uh, in case that I don't have to prepare the talk for tomorrow, but uh, we'll <laughs> we will see we'll see this. And yeah, um, in case lunch was lounge for me today, um, but I haven't updated this one. <laughs> so the last demo for, for this. Uh, whoop. So um, we're doing some record uh, uh, recording when issuing an DD command from Dev0 to a test file, which I'm writing to this file system here. Um, and then we will try to view the data 
which comes out. So the D not going to the dev SDA, that's good. Okay. We have the test data in here and we have also updated here, as you can see. Um, 10 minutes left, okay. Ah, this one, 10 minutes left, yeah, that's fine. So, Firefox out.perf.db.svg. Go to background. Check. And for sure, it, it's on my screen. I want it on your screen. Oops. Ah. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, we're seeing again. Um, the amount of, of functions, but in this case, we're seeing, okay, we have it a little bit, uh, yeah, in a, in a better uh, a way to, to read. We can see, okay, this is my, my whole um, command that's being executed. I'm having a, a file system write, for example, and we're seeing, okay, uh, to have the possibility to write the data, it has to be encrypted. They are using, for example, um, the AIS uh, new instruction um, function for of the CPU, so we can see, okay, we are doing this kind of stuff here. We can also click into it to get details on, on here, so it's, yeah, a little bit easier to, to, to read in, in, this, in this case. So we can switch back here, for example, to the DD or here to the, to the always seeing, okay, what's happening here during this whole thing. Okay, eight minutes left. Okay, so again, here we can see what is happening during this thing. So, uh, the last seven minutes is uh, for an uh, update of, uh, uh, of my talk. Why is the CPU utilization wrong? And for this, I want that you forgive me, I have put into this information from uh, yeah, about 2 p.m. To, to 15 p.m., so it hasn't had much, that much time for this, but in uh, at least I started the talk in time. <laughs> so uh, I've, I've used uh, the information from a blog posting of Brandon Gregg. Uh, he's written it some days ago on 9th of May uh, and updated it one or two days ago. Um, and the thing is, what, have, what do you have to, to care for when you're using the CPU utilization number? And the thing is that the CPU utilization is misleading nowadays and also for a long time and it gets it's getting worse every year so the question is what is cpu utilizations how busy are your processors uh, how busy your processors are and that's not what it measures um, and it means person cpu used everywhere by everyone for every tool also like top and stuff like that because this is also the data which goes into the proc file system and we've learned okay most of the data is taken of the proc file system so when we think, okay, we have 90% CPU ut utilization, it really means, okay, we have uh, something lower than uh, 90%. We are having many cases uh, when we are indeed waiting installed in some uh, kind of thing. The, the waiting like I.O. wait or some other idle time is the blue one here. And the gray one is mostly waiting on memory I.O. And the reason here is uh, that the CPU performance uh, or the performance within the CPU uh, got better by far compared to the uh, performance of the memory. So when you are seeing the information, okay, I'm having 90% CPU utilization, it also could mean that my CPU is only doing for 10 or 15% stuff and the other 70%, for example, it's waiting on memory and I.O. And I really recommend to read uh, this blog posting here. Um, what you can do, for example, you could use uh, these performance monitoring counters, the instructions per cycle. That this has been the number which I've mentioned before that will uh, come to it uh, again. Um, this is the key metric here. We're seeing, for example, 0 0.78 instructions per cycle. This sounds good, but we have to take into account that this architecture has an 
IPC performance of four. Um, so newer Skylake processors are five, have a, a maximum performance of five, so it's not that good in this case here. Uh, how can you interpret these values, whether it's lower than one or higher than one? Um, when it's lower than one, it's most likely that your memory is stalled. Um, when it's higher than one, it's most likely that your instruction bound. Um, more details you can, can find uh, in, the, in the blog posting. And the thing what I wanted to mention here is the third or fourth uh, top tool, TipTop, um, which sounds even better than HTOP. Um, it has this information within here. It can be easily used, just install it. It's available on all new distributions. So if you want, take, want to take something with you, take TipTop with you and, and the blog posting here. What are other reasons why the CPU utilization can be misleading? It could be that your system is running into temperature chips when the cooling is not that optimal. Um, the hardware tries to avoid that you burn your CPU, so it's uh, going it, it, it down. Um, for example, you're using Turbo Boost on, on newer architectures where uh, one core is getting faster when you only have a, a, a utilization for one core. Or using Speedstep, um, important for uh, laptops when you when you want to um, get a long running time, and yeah, also the problem with averages when you have 80% average over one minute, this height bursts of 100%. So you have to really be careful with the CPU utilization. I recommend really to to read Brandon Gregg's uh, blog posting and yeah, take this with you. So uh, the speaker agreement says you have should have maximum 55 minutes, some minutes for questions. I have 57, but I think I hopefully made it. And yeah, are there any questions? It's uh, switched off. The, the, the question is, uh, uh, are there optimizations for NUMA systems? Is this correct? Uh, you, you have yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a really good question. The, 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 the question, uh, if I understand it correctly, when you have a NUMA system, you have yeah, the, the memory bound to one CPU and you want to catch the data which you're using in the CPU in your nearest uh, memory and not in a memory which is behind the second uh, processor or third or fourth processor. And yeah, for that kind of stuff, it really depends on the NUMA architecture. There are different architecture, like not only the, the x86 architecture, also the power architecture have some further information on, on tomorrow. And uh, I would recommend when you're using NUMA system, uh, watch out which architecture you're using uh, and, and, and then search for, for possible optimizations. Uh, there are indeed uh, some tunables you could, uh, you could use there, especially for the, for the power architecture, and I know some of, uh, some of them, and we can uh, talk also in the, in the, in the break later on for that, yeah. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, it's not the case. I see we're just in time. Um, excellent talk. Thank you very, uh, very much. Um, the next. <laughs>